got a single particle experience uh, interference spooky. Uh, thank you very much, Andre. Uh, generally, thank you, Andre and Mark, for being here and all the great experience. And also, thank you, Lars and uh, Javi, for this you know, uh, wonderful experiment, uh, you know, which inspires you know, people in every corner of the world. I'm one of them, all those examples. Yeah, so today I'm going to speak about, um, uh, so here's the question, is single particle interference spooky? And uh, generally the talk will be about how to uh, build theories when you don't have uh, full access uh, to the ontology, when you don't see uh, everything. Uh, that's actually, uh, I think, everything what we are, in which uh, we are all interested in. There is also um, a second type, what I was trying to, I was hesitant which not to deal. So the other would be, uh, the other type would be charting the boundaries of quantum mystery. And I wanted to uh, uh, make a clear difference, uh, or at least convince you that there is a clear difference between a single part particle behavior and uh, two particle behavior, or generally multi particle behavior. Um, and the difference uh, is in the, uh, in the description of the kind. So I, want, I will want to argue that uh, perhaps not necessarily single particle interference uh, and single particle uh, effects in uh, interferometry uh, should be considered as non-local. But of course, in uh, the multi-particle case, which we know from the 40s and all this stuff, uh, uh, then there is non-locality here. So how I'm going to do this. So here's part of the talk. Uh, first, I spent some time uh, on the motivation. Uh, uh, why we are interested in this kind of effect, then I'll put uh, myself uh, in the framework uh, that I will be working. So I need to uh, uh, chart my playground, uh, where my models will work, uh, what I'm talking about. And then I'll build a local model of uh, single particle parametry uh, that I will uh, uh, explain. But first, uh, let me uh, to give you some some, uh, some motivation, and it's also always good to you know uh, to put some good figures. And uh, this, of course, uh, uh, is it should not be uh, treated very strictly. So let's uh, make a clash of those two uh, figures. That here's Spiderman on the left, and there is uh, Schroeder on the right. Or on the right, what were their views on on the mystery and on the theory? And uh, uh, I'm alluding to those two uh, quotes. So the first one is, I would not call entanglement one, but rather the characters trade of quantum theory, uh, of quantum mechanics, the one that enforces its entire departure from classical light of thought. That's what Schrodinger said uh, um, in the uh, early times of quantum theory when it was uh, uh, invented. And uh, here's the other uh, uh, quote from uh, another giant. Quantum inter interference is a phenomenon which is impossible, absolutely impossible to explain in any classical way, and which has in it the heart of quantum mechanics. In re reality, it contains the only mystery. So uh, what is the only mystery of quantum theory? Is it entanglement or uh, is it interference? Uh, two different effects. Uh, so I wanted to compare those two. Of course, uh, uh, you, you, uh, those sentences are, you know, taken from the context, so they, they don't have to be, you know, necessarily represent the views of those guys, but at least, at least it is good to uh, have those uh, two uh, sentences uh, in mind. So is it entanglement? So it is like a multi party behavior, or maybe it is interference. And actually, uh, this sentence uh, uh, from Feynman is taken uh, from this uh, from his uh, course uh, in which he described a yeah, single part target behavior in the quantum interferometer uh, uh, in, in a double slit uh, experiment, what a single part um, claiming that it is actually impossible to, uh, to, uh, uh, to explain this phenomenon in, uh, in a classical way. Uh, there is also, you know, a host of uh, uh, examples which also uh, show that or, or, or indicate that there is a, you know, a huge problem with the ontology that we have, even in the single particle case. So uh, 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 there is this really good like, really choice just experiment, experiment uh, or asking whether uh, uh, the particle is a wave or, uh, or it, it is the particle or wave that we observe, that, that we have. Uh, then, of course, there is this uh, experiment that we are discussing here uh, uh, all, uh, all, all, all this conference. Uh, 
indicating that perhaps there is some problem with the mortality. How is it that the particle knew that the bomb was there when it went, went the other path? There is also there are problems also with this uh, with microscopic realism. There are those uh, well, like Gaudian qualities which apply to certain particles as well, and. Uh, um, uh, indicated the question, okay, well, how, how can we know uh, 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 the world, uh, we, we see the world in the, in the macro scale? What is the role of the servants in the closed systems, in the micro, on, the, on the micro and microscopic level? Uh, just to show that, uh, you know, all those uh, experiments made the headlines uh, of, you know, those big journals uh, with this one. Uh, very prominent one and which developed into, you know, in, into practical applications actually. So, uh, ah, there is also another one. There is a host of other, you know, uh, subtle features uh, that we can uh, see in single particle uh, regime, like the contextuality, we have contextual inequalities, we have caution factor uh, inequality, which also applies to single particles, uh, you know, with, uh, 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 to, it, to systems described by, by systems uh, 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 with uh, three uh, uh, in dimension three, and there is also a host of those uh, interesting paradoxes like uh, cross selection, three box paradox, such a cat, and all those things that uh, you are much more familiar with than uh, I am. Uh, all those things uh, can be illustrated on a, in a single body position. So, this is the framework which I'm going to uh, work. So I'll be using, uh, I'll be talking about single particles. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, uh, how do I want to formalize this? Uh, so first of all, so here are the, uh, uh, the four postulates that we mentioned uh, uh, at school uh, uh, about quantum theory, right? So this is, uh, these are states, there's some stuff, this is what the inverse by the evolution, which is unitary, and there is this uh, measurement of that rule, which is called the model, and the collapse of the wave function. And there is this postulate about uh, about Tesla products, how to describe uh, two systems rather than one. So uh, uh, for the purpose of this talk, uh, I will forget about this uh, tensor product uh, postulate. So let's consider you know, uh, quantum theory as if it was just, just those three, uh, three postulates. Uh, no tensor products, just a single part. That's the framework that I'll be uh, working with. Uh, uh, with. Uh, how uh, theoreticians approach this? Uh, usually, uh, so we describe the uh, system as, uh, as pre preparation. Uh, we describe the experiment as a preparation procedure, some transformation which happens, and then there is a measurement, but there is it is a repeated one. I will forget. We know how to describe it very well in the formalism. I will simply cross out this postulate, so I will treat it again. So if you remember, there is always a single particle uh, which I'm talking about. That's the framework that I'm working with. But of course, relativity is in the lab, uh, as experimentalists, experimentalists uh, say, and the theoretician should somehow you know, uh, go back, go back uh, to this formalism, to these mathematical tools, and somehow uh, come up uh, with this link between what experimentalists have and what, the, what is the mathematical uh, formulas. And I think the best uh, example or the best working uh, model and what usually uh, theoreticians uh, have in their system minds is uh, this uh, uh, in, uh, linear optical uh, circuit model of uh, quantum theory with a single, with, 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 with one, with two particles, or many particles, right? So if I restrict myself with a particle, so what I usually uh, uh, have is uh, or, or want to consider are those uh, interferometric uh, 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 circuits. Uh, that is, so the wires, there are there's detectors, there are beam splitters, and there are field plate shifters. How it is described in mathematical language? So, this kind of story is described in the, in the space of the dimension N. There are N and wires, there are N hubs. Uh, 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 here, here is the computation, but basically saying that well, uh, it means that uh, the particle is in the path, in the, in the path. So this is how it's represented in the formulas. In general, we can have superpositions, uh, 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 super, uh, superpositions. Uh, then uh, we know how to uh, describe each element in this in this circuit. Uh, we know that the free evolution simply does nothing. Uh, to, the, to the vector space, 
phase shift has simply uh, entered into phase. We know that the beam splitters are, are, are described by uh, two major matrices. Uh, this is how they, how they act. We know how to use the uh, barn rule and we know how to update the system after the measurement. Uh, here and uh, through the collapse uh, of the wave function. So this is the framework that I'll be working with. Single particle, uh, I'll call it acute, acute actually uh, uh, any, uh, so we know that any, uh, 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 so the quantum, quantum mechanics uh, of, uh, of a, in a Hilbert space with some of those products can be uh, you know, mapped one-to-one -to, -one to this kind of a stock. So that's why uh, I'll, I'll call it, uh, so I'll call it a cube. So this is what I want to do. So uh, as I told you, forget about the products. Uh, it, let's deal with uh, single particles in uh, intergrammetric circuits, arbitrary intergrammetric circuits, and let's have just a single particle. Forget about those uh, two particles or more. Um, and the goal uh, that I have is to uh, give a Generally, local oncological model of a single of single body information. So every now and then, you know, uh, when there are, when when there are those uh, paradoxical behaviors, uh, people come up and say, "Well, that is paradoxical." But then someone maybe that's local. Then people come, someone comes and uh, shows, "Okay, here is a model," and it's very specific, with, uh, which which is local uh, and uh, which reproduces the uh, prediction of the experiment. Well, but then the guy says, "Well, okay, it's always one tiny little bit," and uh, uh, gives uh, hard light uh, to the first one because he has to come up with some other ontology uh, specific for this problem. So I think it might, might be nice to uh, give a generic model for any intermetric setup with arbitrary number of paths, arbit and uh, arbitrary complicated uh, design, uh, uh, I mean, a sequence uh, with you know, whatever you want uh, to have inside, uh, and uh, build a local model uh, uh, of this kind of uh, other stuff. So uh, let's start. I'm, I'm going to do. So here's the plan. What I, need, what I need to do first, I need to define for you the ontology that I have in mind, uh, and this ontology has to be uh, local. This I need to tell you what travels in the bus. I need to uh, uh, show you one of the building blocks, how the building blocks uh, uh, act. Uh, I mean, I mean, trade shifters, uh, etc. How do they act on this uh, ontology? And it's better that uh, this action uh, would be, of course, local. Then I need to analyze it for you and uh, show that they actually recover the predictions of a single body in front. So, what is the ontology? What I need to give you. Uh, so imagine this general uh, uh, interferometric uh, uh, interferometric uh, circuit. Uh, so in this case, can be arbitrary. You can have a uh, uh, vector inside or whatever. You can have post select or, and all such results. But what each of you would have like in the uh, IFM experiment. So this is the general circuit. And uh, what are the relevant questions that I need to ask? I need to tell you. Tell you. What is propagated in the guide gates? Uh, what is the action of those gates on this thing which propagates, uh, on those hidden values which propagate uh, presumably locally in, in this circuit? Then I need to uh, uh, assure you or convince you that it's well defined local ontology. And then I'll need to uh, uh, show you how to, uh, 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 how to get the predictions of quantum theory right. So, first step, what is the ontology? Uh, the ontology is uh, as follows. So, first of all, there is a particular, uh, there is a particle in the system and it is somewhere here. So there is a position of the particle. Uh, uh, idiotic state space means that I need to, uh, uh, I have to specify uh, uh, the wire, the path on which the particle uh, is at a given moment. So that position of the particle. Then I will say that in each path, there is uh, an amplitude. Uh, I call it a field. And it's a complex number. That is in each of those paths, there is this u, u1, u2, un. So I have a vector of n complex numbers. Uh, and each component travels in, 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 in each of the paths. So this is, this is the second part. Uh, 
uh, of the ontology, so this uh, factor of field amplitudes. And additionally, I will uh, assume that there is something else, uh, a traveling in those paths, uh, denoted by uh, tau, and it will be, I will call it strength of the field, and it will be a real number. So there is a, there is, so, so this, 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 this is the third, uh, the third uh, component here. So I have position of particle, I have a complex number, which is uh, in, in the path, and I have uh, a real number, I call it strength. Uh, this one covered here. Uh, if you wanted to uh, uh, just focus on the prepare and measure scenarios, which there are no uh, detectors inside, I could do away with this uh, in the model. Uh, uh, I could do away uh, with uh, this strength. So I could forget about it. But since you know, much complex, much interesting are those cases in which you uh, have detectors inside. Non demolition. Uh, those detectors could be non no demolition detectors. In my case. Uh, I'll keep it. So uh, it's a little bit more complicated, but I want to have uh, a little bit more general setting. In particular, I would like to also uh, describe interaction to uh, uh, scenario uh, one where such characters are in the circle. Yeah. So here is the ontology. Yeah. Just to clarify, my position you just mean which mode it's in, not like where it is core generator. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Which which part is this it is yeah. So it's just you know, like, like like the ball and the trolls, you know, like along this line. So you're just going to in that wire. That exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like a ball. I've got a question here. Is the tau just the mod square of the amplitude? Or is no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, uh, so forget about the theory for the moment. Okay, and uh, it will come back later on. We, when, later on, when I will uh, be trying to show me that it actually very uh, contradiction. So there's a cl totally custom mode, nothing to do with uh, uh, with in theory and so far. Classical hit and variable mode. So here's the ontology. This is what travels in the in the, uh, in the uh, now I need to tell you uh, 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 how uh, uh, how to describe the interconnected uh, gates, how to do the gates uh, act on uh, at each you know instant, at each time uh, when 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 the evolution uh, proceeds. So pre-evolution, pre-evolution uh, uh, does nothing to the to uh, to uh, does not that does not does nothing to the to, to the uh, to the field. But uh, let's assume that uh, 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 the strength uh, draws by two. I'd say, well, it's it's it, like you know, having the agents, it means that you know uh, the strength uh, decreases at each step. I call it aging uh, uh, of the of the field. Uh, then we'll see why do I need it for. Uh, then the phase shifters. Uh, the phase shifters uh, just introducing the phase on the, on the, on the, on the path to, to this component of the uh, of the field of the field. And again, uh, the uh, field uh, ages uh, its strength decreases. It's not necessarily two; it could be anything, but it has to drop. Then the detectors. Uh, the detectors. What should we do? Uh, what, what do the detectors do? They click with those particle, of course, and that's what they do. If Q equals to J, the detector clicks right here. That's what we actually see. This is how how we uh, how we actually. This is the only thing which we will be able to see in the model are those clicks. We don't see the fields, but we see the the strength. The only thing that we can do are just clicks. So, so the detector clicks, and what it, what, what it does, if the particle was inside, that's the, the detector click, click uh, it changes the, uh, the field uh, to one, uh, and, and changes the strength and rejuvenates uh, the, uh, the strength. Strength goes to one, right? So, U goes to one, and the L goes to one. If the, the detector doesn't click, uh, still, something happens. So there is a disturbance, uh, disturbance on the path, even if the detector didn't click, even if the particle was not there, something is disturbed, and uh, 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 the field remains the same, uh, and uh, uh, and the strength goes to zero. So, so to say, the strength is killed. So this this component, uh, this this field in that part is killed. Uh, clearly, that's a much measurement disturbance. In either, even in the uh, case when the detector doesn't click. That's what it is. 
Sorry for that. I'm missing something. Maybe, but how is that load covariance? So if your your Q is is not equal to J, you you leave the amplitude unchanged, but the strength goes to zero. Uh, so it is local in the sense that well, uh, so supposedly uh, part is over there, but also but but of course something propagates here as well, right? So if you put put a vector here. So this uh, this field and this strength will be modified, but on the long term. So the, mo the modification is is local in the in the mode in this wire uh, in which uh, the detector or phase vector are are uh, are placed. Okay. All right. So in the in this sense, it is local. Okay. Thanks. It's a related question. So, when does the detector click? Is this Q local to the wire, and that determines whether the, that detector clicks? Is that right? Yes, it does. Yes, so, if there is a particle there, uh, the detector clicks. So, if first, okay, so let's look, look at, for example, this detector. <laughs> well, this detector click only if Q equals uh, to uh, two, two. If so it, is this Q on every wire? Are there copies of Q on every wire? No, no, no. There's one Q. There's one Q. But then how does it, each detector on each wire know what Q is? Oh, uh, it doesn't have to know. How does it know whether, whether to click? Because there's no particle there. So, 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 so. I think so, I'm missing what you're calling the particle. So, okay, so, 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 uh, so uh, there is property on, uh, of the system that there is a particle in an even part. But every path knows this then? No, it doesn't. Okay. The other paths know there's no particle. Well, simply there's no particle there. But each pass says, I know there is or is not a particle on this path. Uh, yes, the same. Okay, so if every part of every path does know, at least locally, then what are the particles there? And then the detector clicks at the same time. Exactly. Only that. If there's no particle there, I think it's not Okay. And of course, I have a problem with there is a single particle, so uh, it's always. Okay, so Q is just a shorthand saying, I know which one has the particle in it. Yes, exactly. Well, but, yeah. But yeah. Optically, like, Obviously, it's on the It just says yes or no. Yes. Or not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So so far, everything is well done. And uh, the only longer story, of course, may happen uh, on the on the Venus Reserve, where two wires uh, meet. Uh, and uh, how to uh, how it is described? So so first of all, uh, so what happens to the to the phases? So. Uh, uh, here is this, the description. It is the only place where uh, there is this um, th there is interaction between uh, amplitude and and, uh, and strength, strength. So what does uh, the uh, pinch filter do? It, it does what it should do, but takes only those components of U S which are the maximal ones. Right? Okay. So uh, so maybe how to how, how to explain it? So uh, let's define. Uh, uh, tau uh, st as the maximal value of uh, maximal value of the strength in the in the path here, right? And so the uh, the, the beam splitter takes into account only the strongest strongest uh, strongest uh, fields, right? So this is what it do do. So there's delta simply you no know, cut out uh, cut out uh, uh, the weaker paths and and only the strong ones, uh, the, the strongest one uh, survive. This is what it does. Uh, then, one is the same. What if they happen to be exactly the same? Oh, it, it takes it to the car. This is the interesting kind of case uh, for, 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 for the beam speaker. Then it brings, uh, then, it, uh, then it sees both of them. I see them. Okay. If it's not, if they're not equal, so uh, the weaker one is rejected, and it sits only the stronger one. So it is as uh, well, yeah. Only the only the strongest one uh, will survive survive in the model. That's what it does. And then after the uh, uh, after uh, after the the, 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 the splitter, uh, the strengths are uh, leveled up, so that what comes out is is, is a field with the same strength. Right, if there was uh, like a no field or it was trying to read, right? And the output on, on both output, output push, I have uh, the field with the same strength. Okay, so, is this reversible on the ontic on the, in the ontic description? Can I reverse this map? Uh, not necessarily. No, yeah, no, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. 
Uh, there's, there's another thing. There's another thing. Model doesn't describe the kind of reversibility of unitary evolutions on the omnic level. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. No, 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 it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Uh, so on the on the, on the, on the, on the yeah on the other level, it's not it's not reversible. It will be on the on the other level. Okay, of course. Uh, so uh, so this 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 is what is here, and uh, then I need to tell uh, so uh, the field is rejuvenated, and then I need to tell okay what happens with the particle, and uh, uh, what happens what the particle if the particle was in that in one of the paths. Uh, it is uh, distributed according to uh, to the distribution which uh, uh, given given by uh, by this matrix. It's just by by, by this uh, by the squares uh, uh, modulus square of the of the amplitudes uh, which are uh, at the end. Right. So this is a stochastic gate. It is of course non-local, but non-local on those two wires which are allowed to be non-local, uh, which is good. So here's the description of the uh, or. So here's the description of the uh, of the ontology that I have. Uh, unfortunately, okay. Well, um, I'm running out of time. Am I? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So I'll be I'll be very 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 brief. brief. Okay. So there's some mathematics. Okay. So I'm describing for you the ontology. Uh, there is some mathematics here. Uh, uh, you can uh, construct certain states, uh, look at certain distributions on the optic level, on the epistemic level, and that's that's what we can do. And then you can uh, 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 prove a theorem saying that uh, there are seven classes of states uh, which are disjoint, uh, which are labeled by uh, vector z, uh, which transform con transforms congruently. It is every distribution in a given in a given in a given uh, in a given class, uh, whatever it is, will, will be sent to some other state, some other uh, class of distributions. Distributions, whatever it is, but again with within the same with, within within the same class. And uh, what is uh, important that uh, the rules of how the labels of the classes transform uh, are exactly the same as in quantum theory. That is, you recognize, you know, this this, this is how the phases this do, what the phases do, do, what the vectors do, what the what the beams do, do. So on the level of classes. On the level of classes, uh, the evolution is exactly as uh, quantum theory would require from us. Now, uh, you might uh, um, so how does that it represent the uh, quantum mechanical prediction? So uh, in every uh, so to hear the story, you know the distinction between the epistemic uh, versus uh, epistemic uh, only versus uh, epistemic uh, uh, variables. I think each culture has its own story. Uh, in, the, in the West, the Plato take. Uh, in the Hindu uh, tradition, there is this blind man and elephant story, which is uh, uh, better in the sense that it ends uh, better because in Farka, you know, the guy uh, who uh, saw uh, the reality uh, uh, went bad. Uh, but whatever, so there is a distinction, and um, there's this there's this distinction, and what it does it do for our model? So uh, for, for the model, so. Uh, I have described you the model. I've given you, I've given you the, the building blocks of the model, told you what is there, what is propagated there. But actually, that's not what you see. If you if you because you, the only thing that you see uh, are the cliques. So supposing that you are this agent who uh, he doesn't know as much as you do. Uh, so uh, from his epistemic uh, perspective, he sees only the cliques. The cliques and. Uh, what is his job? Is uh, uh, what he needs to do. He might he has to come up with sort of sort of a story, uh, which will describe uh, uh, the predictions uh, in every possible experiment that he does. So then you can uh, precise it in this operation on the difference principle. We can say that well, distributions that are uh, say which are the following distributions that are not distinguishable by means available to the agents. And the means available to the agent is okay. So doing whatever uh, a complicated uh, circuit I can with phase shifters, beam splitters, detectors. Perhaps I can oscillate. Uh, I can perhaps I do, can do a probabilistic uh, a probabilistic mixing. I do all this stuff, and if uh, so, an average distribution which is not distinguishable by those means uh, should be deemed uh, equivalent in the operation from the operational point of view. So uh, here's the operational uh, desideratum. Uh, so uh, if you know how the model looks like, if you're 
and you know how the model look, looks like because I give you all the details. You can uh, answer the following questions. So which distributions uh, can be prepared by the agents with his limited tools that he has? He cannot do everything. Uh, he doesn't see much, actually. He sees only the clicks. Uh, so which distributions can be prepared and how the distribution transform other, other action of the guy against? This can be inferred from the information that if you know the, what is the ontology. And then you might try to guess what is the minimum operational structure which uh, properly describe prediction of the predictions of the model, right? So from this full probabilistic uh, description, you know all the details, fields, uh, strengths, and whatever. Uh, perhaps you can somehow deduce, uh, you know, uh, the minimal uh, geometry, which this one still describes properly the, uh, properly uh, all the predictions and generalize with all those details. And actually, uh, this mathematics, uh, which is skip, uh, gives you. Uh, uh, this minimal operational structure. So uh, all that counts is uh, is the class label. So instead of you know having you know all those distributions uh, which are which you can prepare in, in various ways, you can simply you know abstract away, and the only thing which counts is this in this in this class label. So uh, we are left with this uh, minimal operational structure. Which brings me to, to the summary. Uh, so uh, what I've tried to uh, describe is a local ontological model for any intrometric circuit, which is local, which has a local ontology, whose uh, operational description uh, is exactly the same as in quantum theory. But on the right hand side, uh, we have quantum mechanics, where if you treat uh, psi as your uh, uh, as your as your ontology, uh, we know that is of course non-local, and we all strive hard uh, to uh, find out what actually is is behind. So, uh, at least for a well, for a single particle parametry, those two descriptions are uh, indistinguishable, are exactly the same. Um, this is what I wanted to uh, to describe you uh, to, to to describe uh, to, to talk uh, to talk about today, and uh, the conclusions. Uh, 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 as follows. First of all, restrictions on gaining knowledge are variety. Okay, so in this model, the, the restriction was that I can see only the clicks, I can see anything else. I can be, I can be with any super wish, but I don't see what actually propagates that. Um, a single particle phenomena are not enough to preclude local hidden variable model. I think that is the bottom line of this, of this model. If you have single particle parametry, you can have a, a, a local generic uh, local hidden variable model. And here's uh, a counter example. Uh, there's no the action of distance. Um, uh, quantum difference, collapse, and all those paradoxes have their classical analogs uh, in models with epistemic constraints. That's that, that that's uh, that's the uh, second uh, third conclusion and the uh, and the third which uh, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to convince you uh, the rule of quantum mystery should be solved in multiple behaviors in behavior when we have tensor products we have entanglement we have no locality we have varying qualities with measurements I believe uh, belong also to the uh, multiparticle behavior as we have come into the. To the, to the additional system, you would have to have tensor products. When, so I think the uh, rule of thumb would be like this. In order to, uh, uh, if you have arguments uh, uh, for the locality in a certain system, uh, it would be better that they contain uh, or include some tensor product structure. If they don't include it, uh, perhaps there are some additional uh, assumptions. Or maybe there is this tensor product structure, or same part, same, same, or, or, or extra on particles are actually uh, in the story, which is fine. Uh, okay, so as, as, as the very last one, of course, I uh, think is that, okay, so as I, I told multi particle behavior is the mysterious one. So uh, there is also a legitimate question which multi particle states then exhibit no locality in linear on considered circuits, right? So single particle states. Do not exhibit or look, uh, genuine non locality. That's what I want to try, I try to, to argue. Uh, but, but then, right, okay, so suppose that I have many particles. Do all states uh, exhibit uh, non locality in uh, linear optical circuits? 
And uh, if you want to uh, know the answer to you might, uh, to this question, you might ask me, ask me uh, later on because uh, I, I think I know how to answer this question. Uh, <coughs> Sorry. Okay, thank you, Paul. So you've thrown down the gauntlet to these interaction-free people. So, so is there no, kind of a good. response? Well, yeah, thank you, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul, Paul, we are. So I've been through an evolution when I'm thinking about things as being a difference between entanglement couple to two atoms, then you'll end up with one atom inside of the other and the other not, then you get an entangled state of the two atoms, only local operation. You can't create entanglement locally. So therefore the entanglement must have been in the original state after the first. So I guess the question is if it is true that there's already entanglement in a single photon off of a beam splitter, what is the what's the ramification of that for your model? So I think that that, that is the story that you're telling. Uh, you of course you get extra particles, don't you? You have extra atoms. I'm sorry, say again. You have you, you have you have extra particles in, in your story, right? Because no, you have no, extra. I don't, you, I don't think you need them. I think already the modes themselves. I think to say zero one plus one zero of a beam splitter that I think is already entangled. You reveal that by coupling the other atoms. Yeah. But I don't think you should need the other atoms to to have the yeah. thing. Well, this again is it simply an evolution. We need to use the thing that way. We need photon number non conserving operations. Pardon? We need to be able to do photon number non conserving operations. Okay. Okay. Number non if you conserve the number of photons, that's one photon. Yes. I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions? Come on. I think the Bowman mechanics. A single particle considered local. So you have a model. Uh, you don't have to invent another one. Okay, so uh, I, know, I know that. The, okay, so uh, uh, right, you might think that that is local. So uh, uh, first of all, okay, so this model is, is, is a little bit different. It's the question is, that's the question. The question is, that many is think better. Uh, so, uh, what I want to say, uh, uh, can you build a uh, uh, can you build a Bohmian uh, model of electronic circuits without uh, without uh, invoking entanglement and, uh, for example, the detectors, uh, the detectors uh, which are in your the uh, IFM experiment, for example? How do you describe uh, how do you describe uh, um, non-emission uh, detectors in Bohmian mechanics? For this, you need to have a coupling to another system, and uh, then it, you know, the the, the story uh, a little structured because you have extra particles, and you know that if there are no uh, uh, those uh, uh, those detectors, there is not a normal coupling happening there. But you want to have like, like like Paul said, when you have a photon and you have some detectors for this photon. <laughs> Then you 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 get your tensor product and whatever. For Bohmian, I don't need it because I know the Bohmian has ontology. We don't know it, but God knows or God, he knows where is a particle. So all interference experiment with a single particle, you need a wave function which is kind of local of single particle all over and a local trajectory. So I think this is even deterministic model of the kind you, you want, which is better. Of course, if you want to test it. Like in any other experiment, then you'll need a detector and tensor product, and then, then you'll get this entanglement and so on. But if you walk, then you don't need detector because you just say, ah, where is the particle? This is where it is detected. This yeah. is the basic uh, axiom of Bowman mechanics. What this Bowman particle means that if you measure it, you'll find it only where the Bowman position is. So you don't, you don't need this additional uh, device. You just say, okay, my moment trajectory is here, so my particle is here. But still, in order to uh, describe the evolution, you have to, uh, you, you would require, I think, uh, I'm not having to be. 
not for single part. No. Even for the other and the pollution matter. Yes. Luckily, you have a field amplitude and you have a particle or not. And a field, local field amplitude, if you have a detector there, will get scrambled by the detector or, or absorbed. And then so particle detected or not. Uh, and that's all you need because the field amplitude is scrambled. Then when it comes to the other side to an interferometer or a beam splitter, that's enough to get change in behavior of the guidance equation of the particles go ahead. So, what do you have a problem with this uh, like a non crossing principle on the corresponding mix mechanics? You may not like it, but it works. <laughs> yeah, it works just fine. It's totally local. But I was going to ask, like, how does your model differ? And I think you answered it, which is that at the beam splitters, you have low stochasticity. Exactly. Whereas in the Bohmian model, all the stochasticity is in the ignorance of the initial conditions. True. Yeah, that sure. like, satisfies. I think there's probably a one to one path there. So. Okay. Yeah. Can, can everyone in the back room hear this conversation? Are they interested to hear it? Or should we repeat it? Okay, no, nobody's saying anything, so I'm going to continue on. So maybe another question. Uh, so, so you worked out this hidden variable theory involving some kind of stochastic process for these wires, right? So you have these, these interferometers. Have you thought about just free space uh, dynamics? Uh, I just have particles moving around in a potential. Is this something you're interested in or not? Uh, so I, I haven't thought about it, actually. Uh, I wasn't, you know, particularly interested, but uh, well, it's quite a thing. It might be, of course. Yeah. But, but still, you know, in that case, we're going to uh, adjust the point size and, uh, and lab. Uh, well, perhaps, you know, a volume mechanism would be a better option uh, to, to look at. Um, yeah. Maybe if you like, you know, circuits a little bit more than lab, uh, than that like uh, uh, feminine, uh, perhaps that would be, uh, that would be good to think about. Okay. Yeah. So then are we all in, agree uh, in agreement of the conclusion of your slide that there's nothing spooky in single particle quantum mechanics? Uh, well, I, I don't know. Oh, oh, Dave, oh, 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 you hear what yeah, I say. Okay, so you have to look, though. Sorry? No, you might be able to comment on this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, if, if you look, for example, on the single position of two separate main phase, and there is a phase there, the phase cannot be a circuit. The different space cannot be thought about as an open corpus because you can't say that there is a definite space here, a definite space here, but there is a sort of space with unattended quantum. And in, so there is already a non variety in the description of the wave function, single party. Could you know? Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, so, 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 so uh, I'm talking. On the absent level, when you look at the general operational description, there is, of course, no locality. But still, in the model, so the model is contrived in a way that, you know, uh, uh, how, to, how to go around the locality in terms of the parametric setup. Of course, it, uh, so you've got two wires which go out, go out of, uh, of a big sphere. It seems like, you know, there is some local uh, um, information contained in, in those wires. But then, of course, in order to, to get this information, you have to come back, uh, come back, come back, and uh, make the uh, make, make another beam sphere. And this information is, you know, somehow you know, retrieved. So, so yes, in the description there is in the uh, in the, in the operation description there is, I would say, no locality and on the theory, like the wave function. But it doesn't imply that uh, there are local ontologies which have exactly the same. Okay, the second question you have this uh, particle moving into two wires, right? And the particle has a massive charge. How is the massive charge distributed in the two wires for the single bar? Okay, I haven't thought about it. Huh? Uh, I haven't thought about it. I haven't thought about it. It is your yeah, think about the question. Yeah, this is a question. Yeah, that, that, that's happening. Okay. 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 And then the single part, because that's a single amount of charge, and nevertheless, you say it's at the same time in two different locations, two different wires. How can we do it if it has massive cannabis between two parts? 
so I don't know really about it. Uh, so all those fields, fields that are propagating when you do and how they do not carry energy. And this is in this time to get the delay model, it is not good for one. I like to say one. So I don't know how to do it. Uh, probably. Yeah, so to follow up to that, the Bohmian model would put all the in charge on the particles where what you're calling is the particle there. And then the amplitude you have would be the guiding wave in the Bohmian picture. Yeah, which does yeah. not care. Once it's been guiding the wave, that's well, only that part that we know about. Yeah. That's no other part that we know. This is not simply my focus. In my Bohmian theory, the mass energy charge, everything sits on the wave, not in the Bohmian position. Then you have to play the friends of the wave and you play the measurements and find all the charts are in the hill. What then is the target of spread? Yes, this is the Russell. It's okay. Last, last question from David. Oh, sorry. Okay. David had a commitment that was next anyway. I don't I want to go on. Okay, yeah. Thanks. So um, I'm probably missing something, but it feels like your model has some kind of implicit contextuality built in. Oh, yeah, it has. It, it, and, I, and I would say that, you know, contextuality is spoken as locally. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, if you give me a, a non classical model that, you know, and then you say it's not spooky. Uh, so, no, I, I would distinguish between, you know, contextuality and, uh, and locality. So, locality is something, you know, very, very, very special, right? You cannot actually. You know, uh, how to justify non contextuality in the real world? Uh, if you don't have, you know,